show us a little bit of the range of stuff that you guys make. Sure, and thanks for having us down, by the way. No um, so we make things from uh, products that fit cars, anywhere from Ferraris to, to full-out race cars, to your passenger car going down the street, your street rod and hot rods. We have a pretty much coverage for anything you really uh, have any kind of concerns about when it comes to heat and sound control. So if you're planning a build, the, the, the really thing you need to think about is everything that you're doing in that build. So heat management is one of them, sound management is another. So if you're building a car like this, like the Mustang, you know you're going to have heat issues um, in certain areas. You need to plan for that during the build. It makes installing the products much easier and more effective than it does trying to retrofit them after the fact. What are the major heat problems that you see in vintage race cars and, and what products do you have to solve those problems? So vintage race cars, uh, in particular road racing cars like this, the, the biggest thing that you see as far as the heat goes is driver comfort in the car. So the foot box, the foot well box gets very hot in a lot of the cars. The headers are run right alongside the, the foot well. So trying to maintain temperature in, in the foot well, transmission tunnel, and then line, lines that go from the back and the front of the car, fuel lines, oil lines, things like that. Um, you know, the, the, the motor generates a lot of heat, all the insulation's pulled out of the car. So you really focus on the areas that are gonna make a difference to the driver and the performance of the car. Um, line sleeving's a big one and um, you know, driver comfort in the, the lower foot box is another big one. Okay, so starting with driver, I see these look to be products that would help with that area, but is there one type or is there 18 different types? So it really depends on, there's multiple types, and it depends on, on, on the, the, the type of car, the situation that you're running. But there's also some just standby products that we always go to. Our floor and tunnel is one of them, and uh, this is a, a floor pan from a car and this shows the floor and tunnel mounted underneath the car. So it's underneath, you don't put it inside Correct. the car? Correct, this is underneath. Okay. Um, and this is done when you know you can get in there and do it while the header's out. A lot of times you can get in there and do it when the exhaust is in, but it's a little more work. So this creates a barrier and reflects heat from the exhaust coming into the, the footwell to begin with. So you would automatically install this before you put your exhaust system on, knowing where your exhaust system is. Exactly, on yeah, that exactly. Way you don't have to, because it's adhesive on one side. Adhesive on one so side, So if you correct. try to snake it above the exhaust, it'll start Very difficult, yeah. yeah. Um, also line the inside of the transmission tunnel. The transmission gets, gets very hot in these types of cars. Yeah, I know. Uh, people don't think <laughs> about it, but it does. Yeah. And uh, that, that heat just radiates right up into the driver compartment. In a lot of cases, we'll take temperature probes and put them out throughout the car underneath and get readings of where the, the, the heat's really generated at. Some places, the, the header may be too close to use a product like that in where it's gonna be just, the heat from the header is just gonna be too much to, to, to handle for the, for the aluminum. And we'll go to something like this in a spot area where this is a, a 4,000 thick stainless steel uh, shield, two-sided and it's welded on the inside, or the, the outside with a, a high temperature insulation on the inside of it. So this can be put into place where there's a, a very high heat area and add additional protection and, and block, you know, block the heat coming through in a spot area. Right, let's talk about header wrap. Uh, these headers on this car have been uh, coated, Swain Tech mm -hmm. coated them. That helps with heat transfer quite a bit. Do you then wrap them or is it one or the other? So the, the one thing that I tell guys, and I get this question a lot, you know, I got my you know, headers are ceramic coated and that's all I really need. And, and a ceramic coating helps and, it, and there's a function to it, there's a, there's a science behind it that works. But a lot of guys will wrap the headers, and it's not only when you're driving it, but when you pull this thing in to work on it, you've got to get in there to, a lot of times you don't have a lot of time, you don't have time to let the car sit there and, and cool down for an hour before you start working on it. So you need to get in there and start working on it. Been there, done that too. So the, the question I ask the customer is, if you start your car and run it and bring it in, will you grab your ceramic coated header with your bare hand? I'll grab my wrap pipe with my bare hand. I won't hold on to it forever, but I'll grab it and I won't get burned. Uh, I don't think you can say the same thing about the ceramic coated header. So you could hit so, your arm against it and not get spots yeah, like Yeah, if that. you're doing if you're doing plugs, you're doing any kind of work yeah. around the area, the wrapping really helps. And it really helps just to, to, to knock down that radiant heat that fills the underhood compartment. So um, uh, I still think the wrap has a place and, and has a function in there that, that is a benefit. Okay. Even if you're doing ceramic coating. You know, to, to bench wrap a header like this, this is off an LS, it's a shorty header off an yeah. LS. Yep, recognize. Um, this takes about 25 feet of wrap per side. Okay. So about 50 feet of wrap total to do a set of headers. That's good, good, um, good question. If you've never done them before, it may take you a couple hours. If you've done them, uh, like if I were to do a set of headers, I could probably knock out a set of headers in 35, 40 minutes. 
you know, um, to, to get a set done. Uh, and it's just would you be willing to take them off the car? <laughs> I'll let you do that part. Okay. Um, but it's just it's all technique. You know, once you do a few of them, you, you learn some some ways that are easier to do than others. Yeah. So it's it's just technique on it. Let's talk a little bit more about sleeving lines. So we have a, a, a lot of different line sleevings that work for different applications. This is one of our newer ones, and this is a, a fiberglass sleeve with aluminum coating on it, but it also has an adhesive flap on it. Um, this is a, a product that works very well on the fuel lines, um, on carbureted engines in particular that run from the pump up to the carburetor to prevent vapor lock. Uh, it's very easy to install. It conforms very well to the, to the tubing, the fuel line, and it stays tight. So it doesn't, it's not bulging and, or bulky type of line. So you so don't have to disconnect everything. You don't have to disconnect bleed. You can start at the bottom or the top and you slide this over the line, start to put the adhesive flap and then just, just push it down until you get it down to the fuel pump, All right. cut it and then... Easily uh, cuts the length of yep, the pair scissors. of shears. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we have different lines to do different things. So this line is a split sleeve. Again, that can be installed after the line's already in place. Oh, that's great. So you can put it over. And then we recommend turning the Velcro away from the heat source. Yeah. So the, the sleeve's facing, the, the aluminum's facing the heat source. Uh, we also have these where they're not split if you're putting it on a, a new line. And then this is a silicone line sleeving with a, uh, an insulator on the inside. Same thing there. This is 100% pure silicone. It's good to 500 degrees. Um, these work really well on battery cables, um, brake lines. We have smaller diameters than this too. So just to kind of add on to the sleeving part, we have a couple other products that um, we can kind of consider in that area, um, spark plug boots. So this is a staple product we've had for, for years. In fact, one of our first products, um, this slides over the spark plug wire and covers the boot down to the end. Now we have a... So your headers won't damage your spark plug. Exactly. Well, it slows it down. Yeah. You know, it never really prevents yeah. it entirely, but it slows it down. Um, but we also have different um, generations of plug boots. This was the original one. Um, then we came out with ones in titanium that take a little more heat. And then we came out with a, a boot a couple years ago, and it really was driven from the, the Trans Am series. Uh, a couple cars that we help out with products, the guys were telling me that they're burning spark plugs every other race. They're changing plug wires. So, um, and the wire sets are $400 a set, so they get yeah. real expensive. So I came out with a spark plug boot that's uh, instead of fiberglass, it's silica, but we put a 304 stainless steel mesh over top of it. And it looks kind of weird because you have this loose fitting mesh over top of it. But what that does is that mesh keeps an air gap between the header and the plug boot and allows air to flow around it. And the teams that, were, that are running those uh, uh, on their wires now, are getting half a season to some guys getting a full season on a set of wires now versus burning a set of boots every other race. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's all evolution. You know, we yeah. see a problem and we try to go after it and fix it. So if people want to find out more about this, what's, uh, what should they do? They can go to our website, design, designengineering.com. We have all the products listed there and we have it categorized. Uh, they can see kind of where, by what they're trying to do, what products would work for their car. Um, they can call us, they can get the number off the, the website. If they have any specific questions, we're more than happy to take a phone call. Uh, we have guys there that, that uh, answer phones all day long. They explain this stuff all day, don't and they? And they explain it all day to you so they can help you out. If you have a question, it's, sometimes that's the best thing to do is just to call us and, yeah. and we'll, we'll help you get the right product that you need. Okay, if you like this sort of stuff, please subscribe, hit that like button, and go to ClassicMotorsports.com. We're doing this kind of stuff all the time. Support brands that support classic motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.